best of both. Mr. Secretary, it's so good, good to, to see you. you. Thank you for inviting thanks me for, over. Oh, thank no. Thanks for, uh, thanks for coming, and uh, it's Secretary, good to finally meet you. Absolutely. I've heard that you're absolutely the devil in front of you. to meet you. Defense Secretary James Mattis joking with former Ambassador John Bolton, President Trump's pick for national security advisor, when the two met for the first time on Thursday. But here's how California Congressman John Garamendi described Bolton yesterday. Now we have Bolton, who is clearly a right-wing nutcase. He wants to take out North Korea with some sort of bloody nose attack, starting a war in the North Korean peninsula that will kill tens of thousands of people within the first couple of days. That comment comes as the U.S. and South Korea begin their annual Fall Eagle military drills. Joining me now is Adam Mount, senior fellow with the Federation of American Scientists and expert on global nuclear strategy and nuclear politics. So, Adam, Mattis joked about Bolton, and, and Garamendi says it is no laughing matter. What is your take? That's one of those jokes that uh, is a little too close to home. Uh, you know, Bolton is one of the most extreme uh, figures in the country on North Korea. He's a man that has said that negotiations are a waste of time. He's said that uh, war is the preferable option. He doesn't much care about how these strikes take place, at least in his public comments. Uh, but his consistent record over the years has been that regime change is the preferred option for nuclear weapons programs. So that led him to disagree uh, and try to kill uh, agreements with Iran and Libya. Uh, that were working and have restrained those programs, uh, and also North Korea, and also Iraq, which is uh, what helped get us into this war in Iraq in the first place. Adam, you said that Bolton has been particularly hawkish on North Korea, and here's what he said on Fox News six months ago. The only diplomatic option left is to end the regime in North Korea by effectively having the South take it over. I think you've got to argue to China. That's not really diplomatic, <laughs> yeah, yeah, as far yes, as they're concerned. Well, that's their problem, not ours. We have fooled around with North Korea for 25 years, and fooling around some more is just going to make matters worse. Yeah. So from what you understand, Adam, is this just cable TV bluster and now outdated? Or maybe once he gets into office, he will moderate his voice. Is this what he did when he was U.S. ambassador to the U.N.? Well, I wouldn't be surprised if Bolton changes his tone as he becomes national security advisor, as he's trying to reflect uh, an administration policy that, at least in public, he disagreed with. He has said that these uh, sanctions, the sanctions campaign is unlikely to work, that it's too weak. Uh, but John Bolton is a man that has been unusually consistent about holding extreme views. He's, he's up front about it. Uh, he says that regime change is the preferred option uh, and we should be headed towards military strikes and that uh, negotiations are a waste of time. He said that when Donald Trump goes and talks to Kim Jong-un that he should say, where do, you want us, where do you want American ships to sail in next week so we can load that nuclear weapons program onto those ships uh, and take it off your hands? That is a dramatic misunderstanding of what a nuclear weapons program looks like, of the political realities of the situation. Uh, and it's quite frankly, you know, incongruous with all of the discrepant evidence and intelligence that we have about these programs. So uh, that's the Iraq playbook all over again. Uh, and quite frankly, he's one of the most dangerous voices in the country on North Korea. But Adam, we do have a meeting coming up between Trump and, and Kim Jong-un here, and it seems to be possibly working. Is Bolton going to upset that apple cart, or do you think that the sanctions are working and they might stay the course here? Well, it's important to realize where we are this morning. Uh, the full eagle exercises started a matter of hours ago. And so it's a small miracle that today we're not talking about a North Korean missile launch. This diplomatic outreach is really the only thing that has uh, restrained North Korea's missile testing program so far. Uh, it's pushed off those tests and delayed them. Uh, normally, these exercises every year are the starting, starting gun for uh, the spring testing season, and we would have expected ICBM tests and submarine launch missile tests uh, happening right now. It, you know, it's just like with Iran. Uh, the thing we don't say nearly enough with Iran is the intelligence said they could have a nuclear weapon today if we hadn't done that deal. And the fact that we have st stuck to it so far has really held back that program. So Bolton is clearly disinterested in diplomatic solutions. Uh, he's disparaged the
them in public. It's going to make the North Koreans very skeptical of these agreements. And I think the likeliest plan now, uh, the likeliest outcome now, is that Trump goes and meets with Kim Jong Un, uh, makes an unrealistic ultimatum and demand. Uh, the North Koreans walk away from the table. And now that they've had this very comfortable uh, and smiling summit with China, uh, that China lifts economic pressure. And so they get exactly the opposite that exactly the opposite result from what they're expecting. Interesting things to discuss here. Adam Mount, thank you so much for joining us on this Sunday morning. Great to have you. Thank you.